Hey folks, I'm Brendan, and you're watching The Overqualified Henchman. It's been a while since I've done a Lego video, but with my cousins Ben and Timothy asking me for one, hey guys, and Series 16 of the collectible Lego minifigures out seemed like as good a time as any. Still, it's been long enough that I really feel like I need to get into the right mindset, you know what I mean? Really need to be the Lego. So with that in mind, I make this look good. Does this shirt make me look blocky? Starting things off, we've got a figure that I really wasn't expecting, the Ice Queen. With LEGO doing more with the Disney theme lately, including sets based on Frozen, this more traditional version of the Ice Queen caught me by surprise. I'm totally into it though, the combo of white and blue, the sparkles, the translucent parts, those ice effects look great and totally say powerful. Next up is the Desert Warrior. His online bio describes him as sort of a Sinbad style adventurer, raiding ancient tombs, and I can totally see it. Dark green is a nice choice for that turban piece, but while I like the big scimitar, black seems like a weird way to go. The cyborg has some really interesting printing on her arm, down one leg, and even on her hairpiece. The electric blue and silver really pops on the black and draws the eye. She's the sort of minifigure that makes it easy to imagine a whole theme based around her look. It's a little early for Halloween, but that won't stop this cute little devil. We've seen the tail and wing pieces before, but it's nice to get them in red. There's not much else going on here, but his goofball expression gives him a lot of personality. You can imagine that he's just as interested in tricks as he is in treats. The spooky boy here here does a great job of illustrating one of my favorite things about the collectible minifigures. This isn't the first time we've gotten a vampire, but this guy isn't just a vampire, he's a character. From his Hot Topic outfit to his one little fang and pet spider, you can totally hear this guy's voice in your head just by looking at him. And his voice sounds like this. Don't be sad, spooky boy. I think you're great. The hiker's a concept so simple, I'm surprised we haven't seen it in the series before. He's got his map, he's got his compass, he's got his backpack, he checks off all the boxes you'd expect. What really takes him to the next level is the alternate printing on his head. On anyone else, it would just be a generic confused expression, but in context, this guy is lost. His misfortune is our amusement. Similarly ready for the outdoors is the wildlife photographer. The penguin piece is pretty great, but at first I thought that, apart from her camera, there wasn't much to distinguish her from anyone else in a parka. Luckily, this is another case where the head printing goes the extra mile. With one eye closed and her mouth set in determination, she's lining up the perfect shot. Next up, we've got the kickboxer, who seems appropriately timed for the summer games. We've seen the boxing gloves before, but it's nice to get them on a female torso, and once again, the head printing goes the extra mile. What's this extra black cylinder for? It's a place to display her helmet while she's wearing her hairpiece, and it is so appreciated. There have been a lot of minifigures who have swappable helmets and hairpieces, and one or the other always ends up loose and rolling around. This is an elegant solution, and I'm a big fan. Meet the Scullywag Pirate. Kind of like the Spooky Boy, we've gotten pirates before, but this guy is his own beast. His clothes are tattered and he's got a bit of a paunch. The bald cap bandana piece looks good and helps him stand out among all the usual pirate hats. He definitely looks like a tough customer. I wouldn't want to run into him on the high seas. This series animal costume figure and its second kid in a costume is the Penguin Boy. He uses the same flipper arm pieces we saw on the shark guy previously and the penguin mask is super cute. Now he also comes with ice skates that can be attached to the bottom of his feet and I never know how to feel about these things. On one hand it's a great icy touch but on the other he can't attach to his display stand while he's wearing these. This is sort of the same problem I was talking about with helmets. They inevitably mean more loose pieces to keep track of. Now now we've got the Rogue. I know a lot of people use Lego figures as miniatures in D&D or Pathfinder games, and they are going to love this guy. The little wolf head brooch and the crescent moon belt buckle make me want to know way more about this guy. And let's be real, those are some killer sideburns. Now, from the realm of character ideas that would have never occurred to me, it's the dog show winner. The dog printing on the trophy is subtle, but it's a nice touch. This is actually sort of a nice break from all of the adventurers and thieves. This guy isn't going on an excursion or fighting evil robots. He's just really proud of his dog. I can respect that. And now I give you El Mariachi. The big draw for a lot of people is gonna be that acoustic guitar. It can be gripped by a minifigure on the neck, but it also has a post on the inside that can be held. Maybe it's just the Robert Rodriguez fan of me talking, but I really like this guy. The silver embroidery on his pants, jacket, and hat really pull this look together. You never saw him coming. It's the spy. This guy has more pouches than a 90s comic book character, and that really sleek backpack is interesting. But the thing to talk about here is the hairpiece. Check it out. There are clip-on points on either side that allow you to attach a visor. Usually that option's only available with helmets, and this opens up a lot of interesting design space. All right, never let it be said I won't go for an obvious joke. 
It's peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut... All right, that's enough of that. Like Left Shark before him, it's hard not to just call this guy the winner of the wave outright. That's kind of a shame because his legs, torso, even his head could not be simpler. That banana piece makes the whole look. Still, you can't argue that this guy isn't tons of fun and he really stands out on a shelf. Rounding out series 16 is the babysitter. That baby piece has only been available in a couple of sets and like a real baby, I find its proportions oddly unsettling, but I'm sure a lot of people will love it. The baby piece will probably overshadow the rest of this figure for most people, but let's take a minute to appreciate that pug t-shirt. This could have easily just been a flat color, but that design is fantastic. And that's it for series 16 of the collectible Lego minifigures. Let me know in the comments down below which figure is your favorite, and if you'd like to see more Lego videos. Or let me know in the comments down below which figure was your least favorite, and if you don't want to see me do more Lego videos, you negative Nancy. The point is, leave a comment, and also remember to like, subscribe, and share. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to lay down. My head feels like a brick. Until next time, keep on henching.